We have sent down the Quran unto you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to cause you to cause you distress, but only as a to not cause you distress, but only as a reminder to those who fear Allah. A revelation for him, Allah, who has created the earth and the high heavens. The most beneficent, Allah, is Thawa, or rose over, uh, the mighty throne. Um, to him belong all that is in the heavens and all that is on the earth, and all that is between them, and all that is under the soil. And if you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, speak Allowed, then verily he knows the secret and that which is yet more hidden. Um, and Allah, none has the right to be worshipped but he. To him belong the best names. And there and has there come to you the story of Musa. Um, so this is, this is setting up the uh, what the talk of tonight is about. Uh, it's the the talk the discussion is about a talk between Musa and Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we have a wonderful speaker tonight who is Ali Zafar. Um, so the breakdown of the event is is everyone got a little um, little card, a little uh, ticket at the beginning. Uh, so hold on to those tickets because we're going to be handing out prizes, uh, little uh, t uh, awards throughout the um, event for you know being participated in, for participating in, uh, for you know we're going to draw raffles to see who wins these event uh, these various prizes, um, and then also uh, our speaker will be having some question and answers, some participation, some activity events throughout the discussion to get the you know crowd involved and he'll be handing out some prizes as well for that. Um, so he wants to make sure that you understand that you know he wants this to be very interactive, not too formal, he wants everyone to be very welcome. Um, and also make it not as um, you know touched for him. He wants this to be a very you know informal, relaxing event. Uh, so without further ado, we're gonna have all these up and come up and talk about the discussion between Musa and Allah <laughs> So I have a lot of gather. Uh, Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the abundantly merciful, the constantly merciful. Uh, Allah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord and sustainer of the universe. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, his righteous followers, and may we be among them. Uh, before I start, uh, I haven't done this in a long time, so it's been almost a year and a half before I even spoke in front of an audience, so I am really nervous, I'm not going to lie. I am really nervous, and if you can't hear me because I'm going to be stepping away from the mic, okay? I want, if you guys can, if you're far away, if this pillar is blocking you, if there's any seats that you can't sit, um, come closer, I would appreciate it and make my job a lot easier. Um, get comfortable because I'm going to get comfortable and I'm going to get informal, and I hope that you guys are okay with that. Can you hear me back there? Maybe you can walk around with that. Okay. <laughs> And you guys don't get mad at me. I'm going to take my shoes because they're very uncomfortable. So. <laughs> and you can move around, do what you gotta do. I do ask that you please like refrain from using your cell phone if you can. 
Does this get throw me off? It seems like, oh my god, I'm doing such a bad job. They're not even paying attention to me. They're playing Candy Crush or something. So please, just uh, you can do that. Not to be respectful of me. I don't deserve your respect. Just so that I'm, it eases my nervousness. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Indeed, all praise is for Allah. Indeed, all praise is for God. We praise him, we ask for his help, we beg for his forgiveness, and we seek refuge and protection with Allah from the evils of ourselves and from the evil consequences of our sins. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides to the straight path, no force in the universe can misguide him. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, no one can guide them to the truth. I bear witness that there is no deity, no object worthy of any act of worship except Allah, except God, the one without any partners, associates, or equals. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu is his slave and messenger. Also, I realize that there are people who may be coming from other faiths, so the word Allah literally just means God in Arabic, okay? And if there's something that I don't translate, or if you're confused about, do not hesitate to just stop me. Uh, the other thing is, if I can have one of these guys up here to be my timekeeper. At, I got you, man. At 7.45, please just let me know that, that somehow, you know, at 7.45, 7.53, let me know. And at 8 o'clock, I should be completely done. And hopefully it's not so boring that you're like, oh my god, I have an hour of, like, torture. All right? Before I start... So uh, this conversation that takes place between Musa al -Islam and Moses and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which can be found in the Bible and the Torah, um, is in many places in the Quran. But the one I'm going to focus on probably the most is going to be Surah Baha and Surah Al-Qasas. Okay? So let's start with the first few ayahs that Surah that, uh, Suhaib was kind enough to read for to us. Baha. ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى. Oh, we have not sent down the Quran unto you to cause you distress, unto you, O oh Muhammad, to cause you distress, but only as a reminder to those who fear. Now I want you guys to remember these three ayahs because we're going to come back to them at the end. And to give you a little tafsir, to give you a little background knowledge of these three ayahs, Allah is telling us here, the Quran to us and to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, speaking to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Quran is not something to make your life miserable. It's not something to cause you stress, pain, to, to, to ruin your life. It's not a torture for you. And it's actually quite the contrary. But why did Allah Subhanahu Wa reveal these to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What must he have been feeling for Allah to reveal this to him? Anyway, just answer. What must Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam be feeling if Allah has to go out of his way to tell him, Muhammad, this is not, this is not to cause you distress? Yeah. Fear, distress. No. Pain, anguish, right? Not peace, the opposite of exactly of peace. But this is what Allah SWT tells Muhammad SAW, this is, if you're feeling this, or to us, if you're feeling this, if the Quran is making you feel miserable, and that your life is a lack of peace, then that you, have it, you have it really wrong. And it's quite the contrary. And you see that, why did Allah, Allah SWT also say this? Because the companion, the, the people of the Quraysh, the Quraysh, the, the, the non-believers at the time, the polytheists at the time, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they poke fun at Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh, look at your God. Look what he has given you. He's given you the Quran only to cause you pain. He's put all these burdens upon you just to make your life miserable. You stand up in the middle of the night for hours and hours on end. Your feet are swollen because you stand up in remembrance of that God and just, just making your life miserable. And then you, on top of that, you come to warn us, to advise us, but we don't even, we don't even hear, adhere to your, to your admonition. And that would really stress out the Prophet that the fact that he had this burden upon himself, he had this mission, this journey, this goal that he had to, uh, uh, that Allah SWT gave him to spread the religion of Islam, to tell people about the truth, and at the end of the day they would make fun of him. The same, these eyes that Allah SWT gave him, they would make fun of him using them. Look at this. Allah tells you to pray all night. Stand and pray. And only to your own, it's only pain in you. And then after these eyes were revealed, Muhammad SAW actually did. Step, uh, take it back a notch and he would rest more in the night and then uh, rest some in the night and then pray instead of praying all night. But I mean, anyways, we see that oftentimes we as Muslims, and especially children, I used to teach at Islam for a very little bit of time, 
a lot of times youth in college we always feel that religion, or religion in general, in American culture, religion in general is something that's just a burden. Whatever it is, you know, don't um, don't have relations before you get married, or uh, pray five times a day, or fast in the month of Ramadan. And when you a lot of times when you tell non-Muslims that we fast thirty for thirty days straight, they're like, "Hey, you really do that? I can't do that." And I don't know if you've seen uh, Malcolm X or Muhammad Ali. They always in the, in the movie, in those movies, they always they always have people around them who are either Christian or something else. And they're just like, you know, I like this Islam stuff that you're talking about, but pork and white women, I can't give that up. That was about my story. So it just shows you this, this this culture that we do have, and this sometimes this understanding that we have that Islam is something uh, that only causes us misery. But I want to take a look at the definition of Islam. Sometimes we we uh, we neglect to actually look at the definition. Can anybody I think it's up there, um, define Islam for me? I'll give you chocolates, please. Yeah, uh, you know, like, yeah. Anybody define Islam for me? Yeah. Submission. Submission and Peace. a little further. Peace. You want to reconcile the two? You submit and then you become peaceful? You become peaceful. Uh, you gain peace. That's, that's, really, that's really close to it. Yeah. What you got, man? Submission to Allah. Finding peace in this world and the next through submission. Mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> okay, that's that's you hit on you hit on yeah, the nail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Islam means, or Muslim is one who submits to Allah and His orders, and is obedient to Allah. And through that obedience, what does he gain? What does she gain? He gains peace in this life and the next. Peace and connect, contentment in this life and the next. So any time we believe that anything that Allah has revealed to us is to cause it to cause distress in our lives or to make our lives miserable, that is exactly the opposite of the definition of Islam. And that's what Muhammad, uh, Allah SWT is telling Muhammad SAW and the Muslims at that time, that every, if you think that this is to make your life miserable, you got it all wrong. And that's what he's telling the, the people who don't believe. You can poke fun at Muhammad SAW for all of this, but you really don't understand. And that's the next ayah that Allah SWT talks about. We have not sent down the Quran unto you, O Muhammad, to cause you distress but only as a reminder to those who fear. So yes, people who don't believe and who don't fear Allah, they will take it as, oh, it's this the Quran and Islam is just a distress, something to make my life miserable. But Allah reminds us that for those who fear, those who have a real understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is only a reminder to them and it's only a peace and contentment and tranquility for them. There are two things, remember I told you, remember I keep these in your head. Allah subhanahu mentions the fear, it's going to be a theme throughout. Mention, this is the first time fear is mentioned, okay? And this idea of misery. Because I'm going to talk about the theme uh, how Islam is not that. And we all know this, but it's sometimes we have difficulty in, in understanding. So why narrate the story of, the story of Moses? And there's a lot of these things that are up there, but uh, who, well, that's not a that question to ask. Who's, who's the most uh, noted uh, prophet in the Quran? It is Moses. I was going to ask that, but it doesn't make any sense because you're going to guess Moses. Um, and there's some scholars who would say that the story of Musa was about to be the Quran. The whole story, the whole Quran was about to be the story of Musa. That's how impactful, that's how long, and that's how in detail Allah SWT tells us the story of Musa. And it's also good to know, to know that this is the Moses, Bani Israel, the Ummah uh, uh, of Musa alayhi salam, the community of Musa alayhi salam is the one that preceded ours. And then the two things, the reasons why we learn from these stories, what do we gain from these stories, why does Allah tell us these stories, what is the benefit for us? Guidance and strength. Guidance and strength. And Allah SWT says in Surah Al-Hud, and we narrate to you everything from the events of the messengers with which we strengthen your heart. Remember this, we strengthen your heart. Allah SWT starts Surah Al-Hud telling Muhammad SAW, what? This is not to make Quran, it's not to make your life miserable. And then Allah SWT tells us, we tell you the stories of these prophets and, and the stories of the Quran to strengthen your heart. Remember that point. So let's go on really quickly and let's start the conversation. I'm not going to go into the whole depth of the story of Musa. It's huge. Like I said, the, the, the scholars used to say that it, it could have been um, the Quran is about to be the whole story of Musa. Um, so I'm not going to go in, into the uh, complete detail, but I'm just going to paint this in, uh, the picture really quickly before uh, Allah SWT speaks to him when he goes back to Medina, when, uh, when he goes back to Egypt. Actually, you guys can do it for me. So, Musa al Islam, tell me his birth. Someone tell me about his birth really quickly in like a sense. Anybody, guys? Tell me about his birth. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, he was born during a time when Pharaoh was killing all of the boys from the 
from the children of um, Israel. So um, he was born secretly. Uh, like his mother uh, secretly gave birth to him. <coughs> what did she do? What did his mother do? You have your hand up, brother. Um, she put him in the river. She put him in the river, right? Yes, in the basket, and uh, their sister, uh, his sister, uh, was looking after him, seeing where, 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 where the food uh, when, when it was dired. Uh, so yeah, and so finally we, it went to a palace. Of, of, of oh, Pharaoh, yeah. So uh, his mother, Musa, his mother, put him in the. Uh, little box and put him down the river so that the uh, Pharaoh wouldn't kill him because he was killing all the, the male babies of uh, Bani Israel. And the, the, like he was stating, his sister followed along to see exactly where the baby's the basket ended up. And it ended up actually in the house of Pharaoh, right, ironically. Yes, by the way, I also throw candy, so don't get like <laughs> mad if I hit you in your face. Unless you don't want me to throw candy at you. So, baby. Um, so I'll, say, I appreciate you. I'll get the rest of you too. So there you go. So we understand about his birth very quickly. And then Musa grows, grows up in the, uh, the family, in the household of Pharaoh. And he grows older. And when he's a man, there's an incident that occurs. Uh, can someone tell me what this incident is really quickly in a sentence? What incident that's really that Musa Samson feels so guilty about? All of his life. Yeah. He accidentally kills a guy. He accidentally kills a guy. He accidentally kills a guy, uh, uh, an Egyptian man. Right? And the, the people of Egypt actually find out about it, and Pharaoh finds out about it, finds out about it. <coughs> and remember that Musa a.s. was from the children of Beni Israel. Okay? And even Pharaoh knew that. It's not like it was a secret. Pharaoh knew that, but he, his wife, Asya, uh, begged that, you know, you just keep the baby in our house, let, him let us take care of him. What, he's so, look, he looks weak, he's not even going to do anything to one man. So he stayed in the, in the house of Pharaoh. And so we see that Musa a.s. was... Uh, a man of Ben Yisrael, so they were the enslaved, obviously many of you know, they were the enslaved, the oppressed population in Pharaoh's kingdom. And then he kills an Egyptian man, so he kills an elite man, and then everybody, uh, and then everybody finds out, and Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh puts a bounty on his head. Puts a bounty on his head, go get this man, we're going to put him to trial and we're going to kill him. So what does Musa Ali do? Runs away, he flees, and it actually says in the Quran, he flees with fear. He doesn't even look back. Someone tells him what's happening, he doesn't even look back, and he runs away with fear. The last one that's mentioned is that he runs away with fear. It's the second time fear is mentioned. Then what happens, Musa Islam runs away, and he goes to Median. He finds his way to Median, and over there, Allah blesses him. He stays there for eight to ten years, works as a shepherd. Uh, for some people say, for Shuaib uh, Alayhi Salaam, but who knows, Allah uh, He works there, he's blessed there, he's married there, he raises a family there. He, he learns a lot there. Um, and eight to ten years pass, and he wants. And he's he's homesick. He wants to go back to. Um, he wants to go back to Egypt. Even though there's a bounty on his head, but he's not going to go back to Egypt straight up and walk into the Pharaoh's kingdom. What is he going to do? How does he go back to Egypt? Anybody? Disguise. No, he doesn't take disguise. Unless no, he doesn't take disguise. <laughs> How does he go back to Pharaoh? Does he just walk into Pharaoh's kingdom and say, what's up? What does he do? He goes back with times, but what, how does he go back? So he's, uh, great. Okay, he's raising sheep at some place. I mean, and, uh, according to the Torah. But uh, according to the Torah, he was probably, or uh, Islamic, uh, Islamic uh, view is that he was with his family and he sees a light at some point. And then he walks up to investigate where the light is. Well, not there yet. Okay. We're not there. I'm asking. Well, I'll answer for you guys. Basically, he goes, he doesn't take the regular route back to Egypt. He takes the less traveled route so that, he, because he's so fearful that he doesn't want to get caught by the, the men of Pharaoh and be killed, he takes a less traveled route in the middle of the desert with his family. Okay? And this is when Allah SWT speaks to him from what uh, many people say, the burning bush or the light of the fire or the tree. Um, there are many different, uh, in Tafsir, there's many different narrations or <coughs> references to it. What does Allah SWT say to Musa? at this tree. Or before we actually even go there, what does Musa Alayhi say to his family? So it's a cold night in the middle of the desert, and Musa Alayhi is on his way back to Egypt, and he's taking a less traveled route, and he doesn't know exactly, even, he's never been on this path, he doesn't know where he's even going, and he's lost. So he tells his family, he sees in the, in the distance, in the desert, he sees a light, or a fire. So he tells his family what? 
And has there come to the story of Musa, when he saw a fire and he said to his family, wait, verily I have seen a fire, perhaps I can bring you some burning brand therefrom, or find some guidance from the fire. So hey, Musa said, it's a cold night, I see a fire, maybe someone's there, maybe they can guide us, maybe they can tell us where to go uh, without getting caught. Maybe I can get, get, uh, get some light to guide us in the night, maybe uh, we can get, get some heat and some peace and some comfort in the middle of the night and rest. Or just get some guidance, to get some help from what we understand from help, like getting directions, okay? And obviously we find out that's not exactly what happens. He gets completely different guidance. And Allah SWT says, and that's when he sees the light and he goes forth, and when he came into the fire, he called by his name, O Musa, verily I am your Lord, so take off your shoes, you are in the sacred valley, valley of Duwa, and I have chosen you, so listen to that which is inspired to you. So Musa is going, trying to get this light, this fire, trying to get some guidance in this worldly life. And what does Allah SWT give him? He gives him light and guidance for humanity and for all of the children of Bani Israel, which Musa a.s. still does not know what his task or mission is going to be. So imagine yourself being in Musa a.s. situation, never not knowing what you're, you're going there to expect some directions or some guidance, and you have Allah SWT speak to you directly. And what is Allah SWT, this is the first commandment he said to Allah SWT. What does Allah SWT say to Musa a.s. now? إِنَّنِي أَنَا اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدْنِي وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي Verily, I am Allah. لا إله إلا أنا. None has the right to be worshipped but I, so worship me and perform a salah for my remembrance. Musa Adesam is scared. Going, wants to meet his family, homesick, so he's sneak, trying to sneak into uh, to Egypt, sees his light, sees his fire, goes to get guidance, and Allah is there talking to him. This is perhaps, and I'm not going to do justice to it, the most beautiful conversation that ever takes place in human history. One of them. And what is the first thing Allah SWT tells him? Verily I am Allah, la ilaha illa Allah, I am Allah, none has the right to be worshipped, so worship me and perform a salah for my remembrance. The first thing he establishes is Tawheed, the understanding of who Allah is. Allah tells Musa, this is who I am. I am worthy of your worship. I am Allah, I am the hearer, the seer, the knower, the everything, the just, the protector, the provider. I am Allah, worship me. He gives Musa a true understanding of who he is speaking to. The first thing he does. Tells him who he is. Then what does he tell Musa Worship me and perform a salah for my remembrance. If anybody can tell me, do we have t-shirts? We said we have t-shirts upstairs. If anybody can tell me what's so interesting about this ayah in terms of so worship me and perform a salah for my remembrance. So the, why is that so important? Fab. فَعْبُدْنِي وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ Why is Allah saying, worship me and perform a salah for my remembrance? What's so cool about that? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's so cool that if that salah is part of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excluded it to make it for people so that everyone that's really good. Perfect. Awesome. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, verily I am Allah alone, worship me, I'm worthy of your worship, so worship me. And he, he could have just stopped and said, so worship me. But he went on further and he said, perform a salat for my remembrance. So he differentiated, or he qualified, and he went into depth about uh, what does, what worship is going to help you? What worship is going to strengthen you? And this is where I want to stop, and this is the first lesson that I want to go over. Is the first thing, Allah SWT, imagine this conversation. The first time, the first conversation, or first interaction that Musa Alayhi has with Allah SWT is this. I tell you who I am. My majesty, my bounty, my my magnificence, and then I tell you, worship me, and on top of that, the worship that I want you to do that's best for you is salah. I'll give someone a gift card, five dollars for Starbucks, if they can tell me what's so interesting between with, with the way Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed salah to uh, to Musa Islam and to us, our ummah. Raise your hand if you want. Yes. Uh -huh. Rasulullah Salah was revealed when he was up there in the heavens. And to him, uh, of course, the conversation was direct, 
but uh, to uh, Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam also went up, but he went up to a mountain. So, so there's a similarity there. The two nations that were prescribed salah in particular, Musa alayhi salam's nation and our nation, the acts of salah for mandated upon everybody. Musa alayhi salam, Muhammad alayhi salam's nation, us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed salah to us. Everything else, when, Musa, when Muhammad alayhi salam got the message, who revealed Allah's words to him? Who revealed Allah's words to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Jibreel Alayhi Salaam. All, most all the Quran was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through Jibreel Alayhi Salaam. But the one thing that wasn't, one of the one things that wasn't, one of the only act of worship that wasn't, was Salah. On the highest seventh, in the seventh heaven, when he went to the seventh heaven, when he saw when Miraj, when he ascended to the highest heaven, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala revealed to him the importance of Salah and he prescribed it to all his nations. It's that important that Allah had to tell him directly, with no intercessor, with no, with no, in, no one in between. Salah. I'm prescribing to your nation Salah. Musa, I told you who I am, and the next thing, worship me. How do you worship me? This is how you do it. Salah. And it's funny because the only who did Musa have a, Muhammad have a conversation with on the seventh heaven? He went to the seventh heaven, they went down to the sixth heaven. Who do you see there? Musa alayhi salam. What did Musa alayhi salam tell him? Go back, why? Because I think it was 50? Yeah. It was 50 uh, uh, prayers a day. And he went to the sixth heaven, and Musa alayhi salam said, No, I'll go back. Go back and get a, uh, tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that your woman's not going to be able to do that. I wonder why Musa alayhi salam knew, because he was prescribed to him and his, his, his woman as well. And then Muhammad alayhi salam went up. And then I think Allah SWT told him a different amount before five, was it not? What was it? Twenty-five. Twenty-five? Different narrations. Different narrations, but he didn't give us prescribe as five. And then he went back down to the sixth level. What did Musa Alayhi say? No, but you go back and tell you to tell Allah SWT, you can, your woman can't do that. And he and finally went down and, and uh, Allah SWT prescribed five. And what did Musa Alayhi again say to him? Go back. go back and tell Allah your woman's not going to be able to do that. I'm going to struggle with it. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, I'm too shy, I can't do that. I can't go to Allah. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi knew, and Musa Alaihi knew how difficult Salah would be for us. Why is Allah telling him, this is who I am, this is what I want you to do? When we talk about the definition of Islam, what was it again? Anybody, you can just say it. Does Allah need us to pray for him? No. Pray to him? No. Doesn't need it at all. That yeah, would we'll go against the definition of Islam, right? Go against the definition. Everything we do in Islam is only a peace for us in this life and the next. And Allah SWT tells Musa, do this. Worship me this way, perform salah for my remembrance, and have a correct understanding for me. Remember those three things he tells uh, Musa Islam while we go on further into the conversation. <coughs> Sorry, I actually didn't mention talk. Talk more about Salah here. <clears throat> we talk about direct revelation. We talk about why Allah SWT, uh, we actually haven't talked about why Allah SWT prescribes Salah to them first. Can someone tell me some uh, virtues of Salah in, in, uh, in Islam? Anything. I remember we had a halaqa the other day. It was a really good halaqa, and some of the brothers met. The first thing they said is what? What's Ma'af? Ma'af, what's the first thing you told us, man? What's the advice you gave all the seniors? Are you going to answer? He <laughs> said, <laughs> first thing he told us, don't neglect your salah. Salah is the mark of a believer. It is the foundation of our faith. It is our strength. It is our guidance. It is our connection with Allah SWT. And we all know this. But we, when Allah SWT tells Musa Alayhi Salaam here, it's crazy to see. It's not crazy. It's awesome to realize how important it was for Musa Alayhi Salaam for the coming eyes. It is our mark. And some scholars say that if the one thing that will take you, one of the things that will take you out of Islam, aside from not believing in Allah alone, is the neglection of prayer. Just neglecting your prayers completely without like, remorse. We talked about Islam meaning that you submit to Allah SWT and through that you find peace and contentment. And Allah SWT told, told Musa, no, worship me, worship me alone. What is Salah? For Musa alayhi salam. What was Salah for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam? Anyway, what was it? What was it for them? 
Was it a burden? And now the, a connection. A way to relieve the distress. A way to relieve the distress that Allah SWT, you mentioned that you think that the Quran is for you in the beginning. What was so different that Islam brought that we believe Christianity and Judaism and all these other religions don't bring? What is it? It is the direct connection, the connection that we have with Allah SWT. We don't go to a priest to ask for forgiveness. We don't ask Isa alayhi salam to forgive us. We ask who? We ask Allah. Allah is saying, you, this, this will be your strength as long as you never neglect the fact that this is our connection. Anytime you're going through anything, don't neglect this Allah because this will be your guidance. This will be your hope. This will be that cure for fear that you are going to face. Don't neglect it. Always remember this connection. Now Allah goes on, and this is the second lesson, courage in the face of fear. Allah SWT gives two miracles to Musa alayhi salam. What were they? Two miracles to Musa alayhi salam. What were they? The stick turning into a hand and the... The stick, stick turning into a hand? <laughs> the stick turning into a snake and the, the hand coming down white. The stick turning into a snake? And the hand, when you put it under his left uh, armpit, it became a light. Uh, it was a miracle. And I want to stop here really quickly. When Allah SWT, in one of the uh, surahs, I think it's Surah Al-Qasas, Allah SWT tells Musa alayhi salam uh, about the stick and to throw it down. And when he threw it down, it became a snake. And then Allah SWT told Musa alayhi salam to grab it. But before he said grab it, what did he say? Didn't he run away? And so yeah. like, you don't fear because the message is okay. That Do not fear and grab the snake, it will turn back into a staff. And in Surah Al-Qasas, it says when Musa alayhi salam threw the stick down for it to turn into a uh, uh, threw the stick down so that it returned to a snake, he literally fled the other way and didn't look back. He ran. He did. He was that scared of a stick that turned into a snake. And that's something you obviously be scared about. Right? And he, he also so this is the fourth, the fourth time he mentioned fear. And Allah uses the same word, fear, in the, the, the Arabic word for fear. And then Musa, then Musa alayhi salam receives the commandment. Allah SWT gives him these two things and he receives the commandment, go to Pharaoh. Go to Pharaoh because he's a tyrant and he's a villain and he's oppressing his population. And what does Musa alayhi salam do then? Musa's response to this, response to such a commandment and mission, Think about this. Musa alayhi salam is trying to left for 10 years to Median to get away from Pharaoh, to get away from that bounty of death. Was so scared that he was willing to risk his family to be in the middle of the desert and take the long route back to Egypt so he can sneak into Egypt so Pharaoh couldn't find him. And on the way there, can you imagine Allah SWT telling him the exact thing, bro, I want you to go, go to Pharaoh and warn him. Musa alayhi salam is trying to escape Pharaoh for the last 15 years, 10, 15 years. And now Allah tells him, go straight to Pharaoh. So imagine yourself in Musa alayhi salam's shoes. What does Musa alayhi salam say? He says, Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min nisani yafqamu qawli. Musa said, O oh my Lord, open for me my chest, grant me self-confidence, contentment, and boldness, and ease my task for me, and may loose the knot, the defect from my tongue, so they may understand my speech. Allah, Musa A.S. knows that this is going to be extremely difficult. Knows that he can't even do it alone, and is so scared of Pharaoh. And imagine, put yourself in shoes in terms of, imagine who was Pharaoh. How great his empire was, and when the people who actually, the magicians who turned to Musa, became, became Muslims and believed in Allah, what did Musa alayhi salam, what did Pharaoh threaten them with? We read this yesterday, uh, Zubha, what did he threaten them with? What would you do to them? Hand on one side. Hand on one side and a leg on the other, and then I think just leave them there. 
This is who Pharaoh is. Musa, Allah SWT doesn't go to him, and Musa SWT doesn't mm-hmm. say, I can't go, I'm too scared. I, Allah SWT, it's too difficult of a task. I'm not going to do it. But he does say, Oh my Lord, if you if I, oh, open for me my chest, rub me shahni sadri, give me self confidence, contentment, and ease, for my ta- ease my task for me and make loose the knot in my tongue, in the tongue, in my tongue, so that they may understand my speech. On top of all this, Musa is so scared to go to Pharaoh. He's trying to flee him for so long. And then on top of this, Allah is telling him go to Pharaoh, but he can't even speak to Pharaoh correctly. Musa Islam has a stammer, he's a, he's a lisp, or he has, a, he has some impediment in his speech. There are different narrations of why, of why, of why he has that and what happened, but he, we know he has an impediment to his speech. So Musa is saying, just make it easy for me, just aid me, untie the knot in my speech. So you can make my ta- so they, they may understand my speech. And I want to stop here really quickly and talk about the conversation that's going on. Allah SWT tells Musa all of this, and what does Musa A.S. respond? How does he respond? He responds in a very human, human manner, very na- natural. He tells Allah, Allah, I'm scared. Allah, I have a lisp. You're telling me to go? No, send Aaron, send my brother. Or at least he sent him with me to Pharaoh. I am scared, Allah. And this is the same person that was so scared of that stick that turned into a snake. <laughs> this is a mission that it seems to Musa Ali that's bordering the impossible. But he still does it despite that he was scared, despite he has a list, despite that he was weak, despite that he was wanted. He still obeys Allah's command. He does not make an excuse. And then what is the second du'a, part of the du'a? I won't read the Arabic. Just read the English. And appoint for me a helper from my family. Harun, my brother, increase my strength with him and let him share my task of conveying Allah's message and prophethood that we may glorify you much and remember you much. Verily, verily you are of us ever and well seared. Allah said, Musa A.S. asked, he asked Allah first, fix my speech, give me strength, and then give me Aaron, give me Harun to me. And make him a prophet so he can be my aid. He can increase my strength with you can increase my strength with him. He can share my load, he can share my burden. And then we can remember you much. Allah so far has equipped Musa with what? First thing, told him who Allah is, gave him a correct understanding of Allah SWT. Second thing, salah. Third thing, he actually gave Musa A.S. two miracles to go to Pharaoh with. Fourth thing, he, he fixed Musa A.S. stammer in his speech and he gave him confidence. Fifth thing, what was it? What did he give him? His brother. He gave him his brother and Harun to be, to share the task with him. And this is the definition of true brotherhood. This is the definition of true love for one's brother. And Aisha Al-Ana, she was on the way to Hajj. And there were two companions, or there was a, there was a person, not companions, there were two men, and one of the men was asking the group a question, like quizzing them, like I've been asking you guys, saying, who did the, who did the greatest favor for anybody? And Aisha Allah stated, Musa alayhi salam for Harun, when he asked Allah SWT to make him a Nabi, to, uh, to make him a prophet. That is the best favor anybody's ever asked Allah SWT for, to make his brother a prophet, to share the task with him, so that he can increase his strength. Our understanding of brother is that we chill sometimes and we go to eat and that's it. When do we ever sit down and, and, and do what Musa and Harun did? Share each other's tasks, share the struggles in life that we face together. Because this is difficult. This is a difficult mission for Musa Alayhi Islam. Just as it might be difficult for us maybe making wudu in a public place or praying in a public place or wearing hijab in, 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 a, in a public school. Because we're worried about who's going to judge us and what they're going to say, and talking about Islam to, to people who, do, who don't understand it, or in sometimes Islam from a uh, country. These are all fears and things that we are hesitant to do. But the question is, do we do what Musa Ali Islam did? Go one to ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to help for help him, and then how does he ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to help him? He says, "I want Aaron to help me. Give me Harun to help me to increase my strength." I don't want to be at the Dawa table alone. Give me the Muhammad and the Manaf to come with me. Maybe it'll make my task easier. That is the essence of true brotherhood. Not let's just go to dinner and go watch a movie. Those are all good and dandy. 
share each, the task of a stamp, share whatever task, as long as it's good. Remember me to remind me to pray. Encourage me to do good. And then he says that we may glorify you much and remember you much. And then Allah Sallallahu says, Allah Sallallahu says, until the process, we strengthen your arm through your brother and give you both power so that you shall not be able to harm you without ayat you too as well as those who will follow you will be the victors. The conclusion of the conversation, and I'm not done, which we will pray over one time, Charles, so don't worry. In the next two, in the next series of ayahs, if you want to follow on Surah Taha, Allah Sallallahu talks about, he tells, Musa makes his dua, and Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and, and Allah Sallallahu tells him, I'm going to, Answer your dua for you. I'm gonna make it happen. It's gonna happen. Don't worry. Then what is Allah? What are the next few eyes Allah Swan talks about? What does he say? He tells Oh Musa. He tells oh, Musa, when you were a baby, and Pharaoh was killing all of the male babies of Bani Israel, didn't I save you? Didn't I inspire your mother to put you in the, ba the, the basket so that you can go to Pharaoh all places and, and grow up in, in wealth in his family? Didn't I take care of you then? And then Musa, when you grew up, you killed a man on accident. Didn't I save you and let you escape Pharaoh without being killed? And where did I send you to, Musa? I sent you to Median. And what happened in Median, Musa? That's when you were you got married and you were blessed and you lived there for eight to ten years and you had wealth and you grew. Didn't I take care of you then? And on this journey of ours that you that on this journey that you're trying to go back into to the, sleep back into Egypt. Didn't I guide you to this fire? Didn't I bring you here? And what did I do for you here? I made you a Nebi. And on top of that, I took away your list. And on top of that, I gave you Aaron as your brother, uh, Aaron your brother, to increase you in strength, so that you both may go to Pharaoh. Musa, Allah SWT is telling Musa, I've taken care of you all this time. What makes you think I'm going to neglect you now? Musa um, imagine his situation, he was so scared of that stick that turned into a snake. So scared of Pharaoh that he would stay away from him for 10 years and then he was sneaking back to see his family. Allah tells him, go to Pharaoh. On top of that, he's like, Allah, you want to choose me? I can't even speak straight. But he didn't say, I'm not going to do it. The first thing Allah said, what did Musa Alayhi have an understanding of? Why didn't he say, I'm not going to do it? Because what is the first thing Allah told him? The tr tr correct understanding of Allah. I am Allah, I am worthy of worship, so worship me. That the next thing, Salah, this connection that you have with me, I'm Allah, I'm capable, Mu Pharaoh is not. So that's why Musa Alayhi made that dua. He knew Allah was capable. Even though he felt incapable, he felt insecure. Allah SWT said, I will give, I've given you all the tools of security. I even gave you two miracles. Go. But Allah SWT didn't make, didn't poke fun at, I'm not, I don't want to come across as, Allah SWT said it to him in a way that pokes fun at Musa. Oh, what's wrong with you? Why do you keep on asking? Why are you so fearful? What's wrong with you? I'm, I told you, I've taken care of you all the time. What's your problem? You're going to be okay. It's not how Allah SWT says, talks. And we'll see that in the next eyes in the conclusion. They say, they said Musa and Harun, after all of this, Allah, these are the next the ayahs, Allah starts with the ayahs where he blessed Musa alayhi salam. And after these, right after these ayahs, what does Musa alayhi say again? He says to Allah, they said, Our Lord, verily we fear that he should hasten to punish us, punish us or transgress all bounds. After all of this, Allah tells Musa that he's, he's taking care of him. And on top of that, Musa goes back to him again and says, Allah, I'm still scared. Yeah, I know you did all of that for me, but I'm still truly scared. And that is the real, the, 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 the human nature of the, com the conversation. The reality, the, the natural nature of the com conversation is that it, it was real. Musa alayhi didn't shy away from telling Allah SWT all these things. He said, Allah, I'm scared. Even though you did all this, I'm scared. This is hard. It's not easy putting on a hijab in a public school, Allah. It's not easy praying in public, Allah SWT. It's not easy even making wudu without people thinking that I'm weird. And Allah SWT didn't say, what's wrong with you? Have more courage. He said, know who I am. Remember this connection. I gave him, I've given you a salah this tool to connect you. 
Remember that. And make dua to me. And it's okay. Always have a conversation with me. Never let go of this. This is what we have inside. Don't let it go. Remember me. And what does Allah SWT say to him after that? He says, Fear not, verily I am with you both, hearing and seeing. Allah SWT doesn't tell him what's wrong with you. He says, Haven't I told you? I've already taken care of you so many times. Didn't I promise you I'll take care of you? Musa was shot, and Musa was scared. He's still just reassuring. It's okay, Musa. I got you back. As long as you remember me, you'll be fine. I'm with you. A man who was so scared of Pharaoh, a man who was so scared of that stick, he lived his life in complete fear. And when do we see this fear climax? When do we see the test, when it becomes so difficult? Where does Musa Islam go then? Where does he lie? Did he go to Allah SWT, oh Allah, I fear I'm screwed, I'm done? I'm doomed? We just learned yesterday when we were reading the ayah after Isha, um, in Suja, what she was it? Shu'ara. Shu'ara. What actually happens? Allah is preparing Musa <coughs> this entire time, giving him all these tools necessary to, for life and for this mission. And the time <coughs> when it mattered, Musa alayhi salam did what? When the magicians Later on, when, when they had the whole duel and the magicians believe, saw what happened, saw Musa alayhi salam stick in the miracle, and they believed in Allah, they ran away. They fled from Egypt. They fled from Egypt because uh, Pharaoh was going to kill them. And when they were fleeing, they saw water ahead of them, and they saw the army of Pharaoh behind them. What did the magicians say? Or not the believers, sorry, they weren't magicians. What did they say? And Musa, Pharaoh said, I'm going to gather the largest army. Against that small army, I'm going to take my largest army. People that I don't even need, I'm going to take them. Just to show them, to cause fear to strike in their hearts. And they see, they see uh, Pharaoh's huge army. And they say, we're doomed. We're doomed. Now what do you say? Okay. Okay. He said, by no means, surely my Lord is with me and he will show me and he will guide me. Allah will take care of me. In this time where things seem completely doomed, there is no hope, Allah will take care of me. The man who was so scared of the stick, who fled from Egypt a majority of his life because he was so afraid of this man. His army. At the time when it mattered, Allah trained him, coached him. And we see the beauty of that training. When he said, Allah is with me. I don't fear. Allah is with me. The tools that Allah SWT gave Musa is what I wanted you to take home today. The tools to life, the tools to success, the tools to, to pass and live that on that journey successfully. Let's recap. What was the first thing revealed? Before Salah, what was the first thing we did? I am Allah, so worship me alone. You can't, I am Allah, so worship me alone. He told him the basics of the weed. He, he told him who he is. He gave, he gave Musa a correct understanding of, of himself, Allah. Pharaoh is powerful, his army is powerful. And you're, you have a bounty on your head. But that's Pharaoh. Who am I? Musa. Who am I? I'm Allah. Then what did he do? He gave him salah. You know who I am. Now never forget me. Never slacken your, remember, your remembrance of me. Because when you remember me, I will remember you. In times of ease, in times, if you remember Allah, in times of ease, Allah will remember you in times of difficulty. And salah was that connection. For Musa. And then what was the next thing? He gave Musa al Islam his brother to become a, 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 a Nabi. He gave him Salah, he gave him a brother, and he gave him a correct understanding of, of, of Allah Himself. Those three things were the first things Allah gave Musa al Islam to surmount the most insurmountable task of taking on the greatest 
and most feared of all, kings. Okay. Those three things. Focus on those three things and the struggles that we face, the difficulties that we face. It's okay to fear, it's okay to be scared, it's okay to feel insecure. Just turn back to Allah. Tell that to Allah. And then remember, Allah will be with you. Remember, Allah will be with you. It is not of time, and I did want to end there. So I'll just make a quick. May this story serve as an inspiration to us and to the nations that follow and the people that follow. Mm -hmm. It's really cool to see who this story was actually revealed to. Who is the story revealed to? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah is telling, when you're reading this, you think Allah is telling you this story. Well, I did. I was like, oh, Allah is telling you this story about how courageous Musa Alayhi Salam was and how he began to be so fearful, but he gave him these tools, and these tools made him so courageous. And it was cool to see that, oh, that's a benefit for me. But Allah was telling first this story to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you thought this Quran, not you thought. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they say that this Quran is causing you misery, making you causing you pain. Look at this story. Look at the things that I told Musa to do, and what did it do for him? It gave him strength. I remember in the beginning we learned about the eyes from Sultan Huni, when Allah SWT says he tells you these stories and the messengers should make strength in your hearts. The Quran, Islam, is nothing to make your life miserable, nothing to make your life hopeless or painful. It is only to strengthen you. And you strengthen yourself by understanding what Allah SWT is, by never neglecting Salah and having a true understanding of the importance of the jama'ah, the congregation, and true brotherhood and sister. Do those three things, then you will gain strength. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family, his companions. Alhamdulillah, all praises due to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Lord and sustainer of the universe. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family, his companions, his righteous followers. And maybe we'll be, may we be among them. We'll go ahead and pray. We do want to do the raffle, so we'll do it right after prayer, or we'll come back in here and do it really quickly. Um, it is getting late for prayer. So I'll clear. If I said anything wrong or incorrect, it was from my own mistake uh, and from the influence of Shaykh If I said anything good and beneficial, it was from uh, Allah SWT and His mercy. Um, once again, I'm not a learned person or, or any by any means, so this is just my understanding, and I got this from um, the, just reading the ayahs and, and a couple of tafsir books, and from a lecture by Imam Hanun al called The uh, Stories of the Prophets. Um, if there are any questions you can ask me after prayer, it's all clear, and hopefully I did. I know I didn't do justice to the story, obviously, because no one can, but on top of that, I didn't give you nearly that. Um, but I appreciate your patience and staying awake and uh, not being bored again. Hopefully I'm being bored. It's all clear. It's all clear.